Okay. So as we are studying about Cisco SD WAN, so before SD WAN came into picture, what was the I means how we were communicating over the WAN? Okay. So there were traditional ways in which we were communicating over the WAN, traditional WAN deployments. So we will see some difference between traditional WAN and uh, between SD WAN. What are, what are the benefits of uh, SD WAN over traditional WAN? Why uh, SD WAN came into picture? Uh, means if if there was traditional WAN like MPLS and all those stuff, other things are there. If other things were there, why SD WAN came into picture? Okay. Second thing is architecture. We'll study about how the design of uh, <clears throat> what do you say SD WAN is there? What are the different components used in SD WAN? Okay. What are how how the architecture looks like? Okay. What is orchestration means? What is V bond? What is V smart? What is V V uh, manage? What is V edges and C edges? Okay. Now we will see this with. Uh, Means we'll see, we'll study about these all components and these all devices in detail. Okay. And uh, then we will try to deploy some of these devices. Okay. We will deploy the van edge, we will deploy the controllers, we will build a small lab and we will check how the controllers work. Okay. How the controllers will exchange the routes with each other, how they are configured. Okay. How the certificates are installed in them. All those things we will go through it and then we will check some overlay protocol. Okay, we will study about T lock. We'll see how the configuration templates are configured. What are localized policies? What is centralized policies? We'll go through all these steps, uh, all these things step by step. Okay, so this is something an overview of the. Uh... So you will be getting the recordings, Hiba. So I don't think so. You need access to record because i'll be giving you the recording okay so don't worry about that you will be getting the recording okay now what comes in your mind when you when when i say sd van what is sd van exactly sd van the software, the, the software <clears throat> used by the software, we don't need to do something manually. Correct. This is what I believe. I'm not sure I'm correct. Yeah, yeah, correct. Perfect. So software defined van as the name only says what it says. It's, it is, it says that it's a software defined approach for managing the van. Software defined approach for managing the van. Okay. So software defined means what? It can be virtual van architecture or it can be means it means it can be virtual van architecture that will uh, what do you say allow the enterprise to uh, leverage any combination of the transport services. Okay, you can say MPLS, LTE or broadband internet services. So it is not like you can uh, means you can only use internet. You can use MPLS also with SD WAN. Okay. So to securely communicate, uh, so you can say connect users to the application. So this is what SD WAN is. Okay. It, it uses what software to control the connectivity, to control the management and services between the data center and removed branches. So previously, what I'll do, I'll just get into some paint. Okay, so previously what uh, we used to do, we used to have, suppose I'll, I'll just take a cloud. Okay, I'll just take a cloud over here. Okay. So previously, suppose we had multiple branches. Okay, so suppose I had one branch over here, one router over here, one, one branch over here, one branch over here. Okay. So suppose we had, these are multiple routers. Okay. Connected. Now, what we used to do, we used to now, basically this SD van is not new for us. Okay. This is something that we were using previously also. 
and if you if you remember we were using something known as sdn or sda software defined networking or software defined access okay so sdn is something that is uh, that is similar to your uh, this this part so this is sda is something like you have a server over here suppose you have a server so what what routers and the devices that they have okay what suppose if this is a router what they have in previous in traditional network what we used to have used to have different control plane means sorry not different control plane we used to have control plane and data plane on the router on the device itself okay so what does the control plane does control plane will make the decision on how to forward the packet like whatever the routing protocols are there how the routing protocols will work okay on the basis of which routing protocol the control plane will make the actions on the basis of the control plane the packets will flow okay how the the, the the decision maker will be the control plane okay what does the data plane does data plane will only forward the data okay it is responsible to forward the data so in traditional networking what we used to have we used to have something known as on the router only we used to have control plane and data plane now with sdn they came up with something like we will have a separate control plane device okay we will have a separate control plane device who will make decisions okay that will make decisions and that will make the decisions on the basis of that decisions we will uh, means whatever if if suppose i have a network that i need to add if i want to add a network if i added a network x on this router now this router doesn't have to go and advertise this network to each neighbor it will only go and advertise the network x to the control plane okay there will be a server on which my control plane will be residing now the control plane will get the network x advertised okay so you are giving me a network x okay my responsibility is to share this information with all the other routers okay so this is what the concept of traditional network or it means sdn you can say okay so now the data plane would be same on the device only the data plane will be on the device only the forwarding information will be given by the means the forwarding uh, the forwarding plane will be on the device only okay only what will be changed the control plane will be on a different server or a separate server you can say so this was something sdn okay so sdn now sdn will also you can say sdn it was also something like uh if i if i come into sdn so sdn was also divided into three things now okay so sdn also had three parts not 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 three parts you can say it includes three things it had wan sorry lan wan and one thing was data center okay so it had lan wan and data center so for sdn what we were using for what sdn uh, we are using something known as so for uh, lan under sdn we are using something known as sda software defined access for wan we are using sd wan for wan we are using sd wan under data centers now some of the companies were having data centers okay some some kept on premises okay some had on premises data centers so uh so cisco was the company that came up means came into picture or uh, you can say came 
became famous with something known as ACIs. Okay, so in data centers, they we are using ACIs. Okay, so ACIs are something that uh, because of this, Cisco became a market king. You can say. Okay, so previously, I mean, Cisco introduced the ACI concept. to some of the company so cisco see what what cisco does exactly so sd wan is not that is something built or uh, made by cisco it is acquired from a company known as webtela so what basically cisco does so the best strategy of cisco is if you cannot build anything or if you cannot make anything buy it okay so cisco what it did previously I means it is originally built by a company known as webtela and webtela was then acquired by cisco that is the reason we have everything named as v v v v edge v smart v bond v manage okay everything is webtela now cisco is trying very hard to remove this v and they bought something known as c p edges okay so i was explaining you that similarly cisco also for uh, for voice you, you know the call manager okay it was not made by cisco it was made by some company known as celsius okay and cisco acquired it so this is what cisco does if you cannot make it acquire the company but be it in your name so after few days means after few years after few time people will not remember that particular company people will remember that this is a cisco product but actually sd wan is a product that was introduced by webtela okay same as linksys for wireless linksys also was acquired by for it, it was for wireless it was acquired by cisco later on then iron port for security this these are some some uh, small companies that were acquired by cisco okay so cisco if if cisco likes a solution for something and they cannot build it cisco acquires that okay so with the help of this aci cisco became a market king and this in in this api we use something known as epic epic okay now it is not like cisco was not having some uh, concept for wan they were also having they were also having something known as i wan intelligent wan okay but this was that was not as good as sd wan that is the reason they came they acquired this company okay now there is one more concept in this sd wan that is something known as miraki cisco miraki if you have heard about that cisco miraki now that is also something uh, sd wan but for cloud based or you can say for small setup cloud based and for small setup for huge setup we need this sd wan okay we don't need uh, such type of things like we like you see over here okay so basically in traditional wan networks what we used to have we used to if if you let me let me go to my to uh, this thing so in traditional wan deployments what we used to have we used to go and configure indi individual device okay suppose if i have 10 devices or 100 devices i need to go on each device and i need to configure each device separately individual device configuration configuration is not standardized organization wide so suppose if i configured something okay and after some time i left the job now a new network engineer came he will configure the things so so he will not understand because my way of configuration and his way of configuration might be different so there is no standardized configuration okay so here in traditional wan deployments there were or in traditional deployments you can say not only wan also am this is this can be also on lan networks so that was something uh, it was not standardized focus on link connectivity not the required performance for applications typically difficult to migrate to another wan services okay 
Control plane and data plane both exist together on each and every router. As I said, as I explained you in traditional deployments, the uh, the, the control and data plane were on the single device. On every device, every device has its own control, had its own uh, control and data plane. Okay, so they they every device used to make its own decision about forwarding the data, and every device has its own uh uh information or its own data plane to forward the data every device or uh, every router needs to calculate and populate the routing table with best path okay so like like this is same as the control plane so every device will make its own decision and it they will have their own uh thing to communicate okay now, what is the what what is the most popular van? Uh, you can say what is the most popular what do I say van services that you all know? Most popular van services. Vodafone. Okay. So, see, most popular van services is what internet. Why internet? You can have. Uh, you can say any to any communication. Okay, via internet, you can have any to any communication. Internet is the best and most popular van service in the world. Okay, so previously, when there was uh, something, we if 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 I want to reach from one uh, site to another site, okay, suppose if I had these different sites, okay, if I want to reach one site to another site, what we were using previously in traditional network. You are using something known as DMVPN. Okay, so DMVPN is something like means uh, if if like if I want to uh, reach somewhere, I was using a VPN. Through VPN, we can go. But and to secure that VPN, we use something known as IPsec. Okay. Now, why MPLS also? This is not possible. Any to any communication via MPLS is not possible. So. Over the internet, you can communicate from any to any. Okay. Now, for internet, the the configuration is also simple. You just need a default route to be added. Okay. So the most popular van service will be internet. Okay. So via the internet, and this thing can be uh, configured on the internet, or you can use mpls clouds also mpls also okay so sd van is basically uh as i said a software to uh, control the connectivity okay now what sd van in sd van what we had we decoupled decoupled what we decoupled the control plane from the data plane okay so data plane resides on the router on the device only and the control plane will go to a server a server or a device or a controller that is known as v smart okay v smart got it now one of the main uh, feature you can say for sd wan is uh, you can say the ability to manage multiple connections Okay, multiple connections. Either you can you can connect from uh, via MPLS or you can connect via uh, broadband or LTE. Okay, so it it is the main feature is to ability ability to manage the multiple connections. Okay, and now another ability is to uh, segment or you can say partition and uh, you can you can say secure the traffic. Okay, over the van. The secure the traffic that is traversing over the van, that is moving over the van. Okay, it is not like uh, it is not like the traditional router centric van. Okay, it the SD van model is, uh, is is it is designed to fully support application hosted. Okay, either you can say on uh, premises data center all or on any public servers or any private cloud or you can say software as a service or you can you can use anything for sd van okay so it can be 
on site or you, it, it it can be on the cloud okay so what what are the benefits of means if you compare a traditional van with hd van so what what traditional van does traditional van will uh, give you conventional approach okay of uh, managing devices you can say everything needs to be done manually whereas hd van what it does it provides you software defined approach of managing device okay now if suppose i want to add one more device in this uh, network or something i need to if i need to scale up it will take very high time for me in the traditional van okay if i want to add something okay it will take very high time whereas in hd van new configuration and scale up will be very it will be quick it will be in very low time okay next can be you can say in traditional van we have high cost and uh, the speed may vary and all those things in hd van we have low cost and better speed okay you can say dia the uh, uh, direct internet access you can say you can have direct access to the internet okay uh there can be more things that we can uh, more advantages or you can say more uh, comparison or more benefits between these these things okay so ultimately you can say the decision between traditional van and hd van okay that will depend on your uh, what would you say organization situation and current uh, infrastructure events okay it is totally dependent on organization got it guys yes now when when hd van came into picture okay now we i i i cannot add or i cannot uh, means completely stop my whole network and build with hd van and all those stuff okay i need to do it step by step so when when hd van came into picture okay so suppose if if uh, i i'll give you an example suppose if mcdonalds or kfc like these companies they, these these big brands came into market okay suppose they came they plan to uh, open their franchises open their branches in india also okay they came to india so they will never do this thing that they will uh, open the branch in each and every city each and every location uh, what they no, what basically they will do they will first uh, target the metro cities okay they will first target the metro cities if their business will grow on in the metro cities then they will go and they will uh, plan in some other cities and some other uh, states or you can say then they will go to uh, smaller cities okay so no company will go and uh, change the complete network or or change or, or or remove the complete thing or build uh change or, or you can say build a new network okay at once they will do it step by step this was an example just an example okay so as i said you can have this connectivity over mpls also and over internet also now as i am saying over internet now over internet we should have if suppose this is my internet over internet if my these are van edges over here well, I'll, i'll draw a new diagram suppose this is my internet or you can say this is not just an internet we cannot use just an internet word we can use something for communication we can use mpls cloud also 
okay so suppose here are my van edges connected okay v edges are connected over here these are suppose v edges now v edges also now cisco uh, now, now now previously tela was uh, not acquired webtela had some hardware devices now also we get some hardware devices also for these van edge routers okay but uh, in recent days we can we can we can also uh, deploy them in uh, you can say software based okay also like in evng or any any other stuff you can deploy them okay for small organization you can use this software based okay we are having some uh, hardware routers also available okay so suppose if i am having different branches suppose this is my uh, you can say hq okay this is hq these are branches this is branch 1 this is branch 2 this is branch 3 now all this are connected via internet so wan edges will be communicating over the internet now here suppose we are having the controllers we have a v manage then we have a controller name as v bond then we have something known as v smart okay so these are the controllers that we will be uh, having they will be now v manage is like your management v bond is your orchestrator or it, it handles the security v smart is your control plane okay so why we need these controllers now now these are the wan edges i said now wan edges wants to communicate with each other suppose hq wants to communicate with the branches so they will be what they will be communicating over the internet so when the traffic is moving over the internet the traffic should be secured okay so as i said when we were communicating over dmvp and we had introduced something known as ipsec so what does ipsec does my traffic will move over the internet via the vpn so the traffic will be encrypted security is given to that traffic same ways in sd wan also we are securing our traffic with the help of a controller known as v bond so over the internet we should have security okay so we have v bond now v bond is something that is that will not only uh how, means how it works how v bond works what is exactly v bond means that will also take care of authentication authentication for not only the wan edges it will also authenticate the controller that is v manage v smart it will also authenticate the uh, devices okay the sd wan the, the you can say the v manage all those stuff okay so these are the components that we will be using so over the internet either we can use internet or i'll i'll add it over here either we can use if i want the communication medium now it can be any wan communication either the internet or mpls we can use it is not bound that the communication should be only over the internet okay it can be over the internet it can be over mpls now sd wan benefits as i said lower wan cost improved security simplicity of policy implementations now when we uh, means in the in the traditional uh, wan deployments we need to configure a lot of things if you need to pol if you need to configure any policy we need to configure uh, a lot of commands and all those stuff here is in sd wan i'll show you i'll show in later part when we will be doing the practicals i'll show you how simple the policy implementation is but you should have an understanding of the concept if you don't have an understanding of the concept everything will be difficult for you so you should at least know how traditional wet network works then only you will have a better idea of sd wan okay then only you can compare what is sd wan and what is traditional network in increased user productivity by optimizing cloud 
an on premises application performance with real time analytics visibility and controls so it has uh, real time analytics it has real time visibility and all the controls uh, we can we can control the v smart v manage v, v, v bond v edges from a single point of contact automated standardized setup of connectivity between sites transport independent simplified integrated operations more flexibility and easier to migrate van services the required predictable performance for important applications so these are some benefits okay now this is something in architecture of sd van now this is something uh, i got from cisco's uh, document so it is like this is these are the this is the hierarchy how it looks like okay so different devices will have different logos like this is my v manage okay this is the management plane okay you can say this is the management plane this is my v smart it has something like uh, settings like or controller like thing these are my van edges or they are known as v edge okay now with cisco you can use isr and asr routers also as van edge devices okay v bond is as i said orchestration orchestration so it is like uh, zero touch provisioning you can use and uh, you can have something known as you can you can get authenticated via the v bond so v bond is the main component of the sd van okay not you can say not the main but it is responsible for the authentication for security of the packets okay for secure for uh, authenticating the devices okay now the, what what happens when you have uh, when, when you build a uh, this thing sd van okay so sd van is uh, built and if, if you want to configure you need to get some certificates okay you need to get some license from cisco okay so the, those license will include some some things okay so those license in those license we need to give organization name so either you can keep your own organization name or you can keep xyz anything organization name the second thing you need to provide cisco the v bond ip address that you will be using so the license file that cisco will give you okay all the serial file that the cisco will give you the license file is also known as a serial file will be built on the basis of the information that you give okay so it will include the organization name that you give also the v bond ip address that you provide to them okay so now this v bond so let us study about uh, these devices one by one what do you mean by v manage so v manage is something as i said as, as the name only suggests management okay manage so this is something a centralized network management system okay which which will provide a a gui interface to easily you you can say monitor and configure uh, and also you can say maintain the sd wan devices okay and uh, something known as underlay and overlay okay so what do you mean by underlay and overlay i'll come to that okay later on in the in in, in the future sessions okay so underlay and overlay is taken care by or or all the managing part is taken care by of the v manage okay so you can say it it provides a single pane of glass okay it will present data from multiple sources in a single display or unified display okay it will it will gather all the information from v smart from v bond and from all the services from uh, all the things from everywhere and it will only it will include all these things in a single uh, display unified display okay that is now this is what it is a software based component v manage it is a software based component got it so we manage the we manage nms provides the management plane gui 
it enables centralized configuration and simplifies changes it provides real time alerting it runs as a virtual machine perform configuration provisioning troubleshooting and monitoring activity now multiple v manage nms uh, network management system you can say nms are clustered for redundancy okay now v smart v smart what do you mean by v smart <laughs> now v smart as i said this is a control plane or this is used as a controller v smart controller now this is responsible for centralized control plane of sd wan network now everyone every router wan edge router will send all its information to the v smart and the v smart will be responsible for the control or uh, v smart will be uh, responsible to distribute this information okay now what it will do it will maintain a secure connection with every wan edge okay it will it will maintain a secure connection with every wan edge router okay and it will distribute the routes and also uh, you can say if if any policy is been pushed any policy information okay wire via the omp it will push to the wan edges omp is overlay uh, management protocol okay so this is o omp is something like a route reflector you can say it will be smart it, it, it is like a route reflector in bgp if you know route reflector it will just act as the same now it is a centralized you can say uh, centralized brain of the network okay now this is also a software based component now v smart is always uh, positioned as a hub device okay in the control plane topology and uh it it will be connected with uh, it will be peered you can say with all the v edges okay like in our topology if you see it will it is full meshed with all the v edges so it will be kept in as a hub device you can say okay now there is a question how many v smart we can use I means should we use only one v smart what is recommended can can you can you guys tell me what is recommended means what how much is recommended by cisco i think at least two because if one down the other will take over for redundancy you are saying for backup yes okay so uh, cisco recommends minimum 3 v smarts for redundancy that is the reason you can see three in the pictures okay as i said this uh, image i got it from the cisco's uh, document only so cisco recommends minimum 3 v smart for redundancy redundancy is nothing but backup backup of one device okay now this is not like uh, you have to use only a single v smart or you have to use only a single thing okay so you can use uh, multiple v smart also okay. uh sorry to interrupt but uh, is there any uh, specific uh, uh, reason why cisco has uh, uh, recommended for three v smart that for redundancy purposes okay so mm -hmm. like if 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 suppose we have multiple if i have a huge network okay controlling multiple so every v smart can control a minimum means a, a number of uh, control connections you can say so every v smart can only is only capable of uh, what do you say handle 2000 control connections around 2000 i i don't remember the exact number or it is around 2000 only okay it is capable of uh, handling 2000 control connections okay so this is this doesn't mean that 2 2000 connections 2000 vhs this is not the number okay so the communication between v smart and vh 2000 one v smart can support 2000 control connections okay the control connections is what the communication between 
a VH and a VSmart is known as control connection. Okay. Now, everybody in the network should be aware of what V bond. Okay. Now, how the communication goes? Okay. How the routing info information is been uh, shared? Okay. Between these devices, or how these devices will communicate with each other? So, suppose if I if 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 a controller is talking to another controller. Okay. Controllers are these V bond, V manage, V smart. Okay. Whereas the uh, the VH is what your VAN edge device. So if a controller is talking to another controller, that will be something done over DTLS. It is fast. Okay, the mechanism that it uses when a controller is talking to another controller, a controller is uh, sending information to another controller. That is something known as DTLS. Now. This is UDP based. You mean connectionless. So it will be fast. It will be fast. DTLS is UDP based. Okay. So it will be very fast. Now, if a van edge is communicating with a controller, it will be also over DTLS fast. But when a van edge is communicating with another van edge, it will be over IPsec. It will be over. IPsec. Okay. Now these controllers also talk to with each other. How they talk with each other? That we means we manage had to authenticate, have to authenticate to be a part of network, to be a part of SD WAN uh, network or architecture. It should first go and authenticate itself from uh, from the V bond. So they they also talk to each other. Controllers will also communicate with each other. Okay, so we manage will go to we bond and they will say, I'll okay, I, I have these all information, these all are my details. Okay, I want to be a part of this network or uh, this uh, architecture. Okay, I am the we manage, I'll manage all these things. Okay, now these <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah, yeah. guys, please be on mute or else I have to do some settings. Okay. So now these these as I said these uh, SD WAN okay devices are uh, can be used as a virtual images also in some virtual softwares like uh, what do you say EVNG okay EVNG also we can use this. So the most stable version or the version that is used in the lab exam for enterprise also. That is 18.4.4. Okay, that is the most stable version as of now. So, see, do we have more higher versions also? 20, 21 also. The stable version for Webtilla, okay, and which is there in the lab exam, that is 18.4.4. Okay, now this. What, how, how they, how the devices communicate with each other, how these devices communicate with each other. There must be something, there must be some uh, protocol running. So we can, as, as this was a third party, okay, Webtela was not Cisco. So they were either using OSPF or BGP. So on 18.4.4, .4, we have something support for OSPF and BGP. They have support for OSPF and BGP. Now in the newer version, in the newer version, suppose we are using 20, they have included as now this is a uh, Cisco's uh, property or you can say Cisco has acquired Veptilla. They have also included EIGRP as a protocol for communication. EIGRP is Cisco proprietary. 
in the latest version they have included eigrp also as an protocol for communication okay so cisco has introduced this uh, eigrp as an igp protocol interior gateway protocol and bgp is for exterior gateway protocol egp got it now as as these devices as i said these devices had to communicate have to communicate with each other now how they will communicate with each other they need to have some routing protocol so first of all they need to have reachability so the requirement for uh, so we were talking about v smart okay let us complete this uh, devices things first so v smart as i said it is what centralized brain of the network now comes v bond now v bond is uh, you can say considered as orchestrator of the system now orchestrator i'll i'll just give you some basic example if you have seen a live orchestra or if you have seen some music uh, music music things like if if you watch fl films or something uh, you must have seen that there is a band sitting okay and there is one guy who will just move his hand in this way okay something like he will move this move his hand in some ways and the people who are sitting the musicians they are trained that if i do in this way you have to play this music if i do it in this way you have to play this music that person is known as orchestrator okay so v bond is something is v bond is similar to that orchestrator it will it will uh, you can say it will authenticate all the users it is something like it will be uh, connectivity between all the other components in the system so as the orchestrator will make the connectivity between the music between all means for all the if if there was no orchestrator all the guys would have uh, means they have they would have played differently okay they would have not been played common music okay at at one time you got my point yeah you can say bonds all the components together so its job is to orchestrate the connectivity between the other components in the system okay so you can say in other words uh, you can say it 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 will it tells our vh where and how to connect our organization okay uh means how to how to reach the v manage how to reach the v smart controller okay so also it will be uh, uh giving some advice to our or uh, advising our v smart controller uh you can say as a new vh in the sd wan fabric okay now v bond uh it will it has it is it it also has a role to uh, inform the vhs okay if they are behind a nat okay behind natted uh, environment okay behind a nat device okay which which you can say if that is facilitating ipsec nat traversal or uh, which allows authentication header security okay so that is also responsible for uh, responsibility of the v bond now v bond will be first point of contact for every device okay so the first point of authentication for all sd wan components okay as a device boots up it will be first contacting the v bond okay to join the fabric now what do you mean by fabric what does fabric means we we must have heard about this word fabric what does this fabric word means actually so fabric means like if i give you a basic example it is like a family okay so it is like a, a family of different devices okay so a family is known as a fabric okay i am just giving a simple name to it okay so 
we get confused sometimes what do you mean by fabric so fabric is nothing but a family okay sd wan family you can say yeah group of devices uh, consist of control data and management plane okay so a re means i i made it very simple a family you can uh, memorize okay so just uh, this is what the v bond is now come to v edges v edge routers now this device will be this device will sit at a physical site or you can say it will be on the cloud and what it will do it will provide secure data plane connectivity okay among one among the uh, sites over one uh, or more van services okay or more or more van transports now what is this uh, van is responsible van is responsible for traffic forwarding okay vh is responsible for traffic forwarding security encryption quality of service okay qs is also the responsibility of this and uh, you can say routing protocols like bgp will be on this and ospf as i said webtela so all these things will be running on these okay now this vanage can be hardware or software based okay component it can be both either hardware or uh, it can be also software based solution understood now for sd wan the basic thing that we need is reachability first of all we need to have the reachability the devices should be reachable with each other i'll just show you an uh, ui for sd wan okay for uh, we manage so this is something a we manage i have a small deployment okay so i'll just show you that just give me a second okay so this is how the this is how the v manage uh, looks like okay the gui for v manage looks like okay we will study about it in more detail okay we will study how to build a network how to uh, configure these all devices how to add certificates here we have different options on the left hand side we have configuration under configuration we have devices certificates network device design here we have tools here we have uh, maintenance we have administration okay we have v analytics okay if you you can see v analytics over here launch analytics okay so there is some inner analytics is not enabled i can go on the dashboard and check now you it 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 shows me that v smart there is one v smart which is up there are five vanages okay two are up three are down one v bond v manage okay now if i go on configuration under devices it shows me these are vanage list okay these are the vanages if i go in the controller it will give me the controller details these are the ip address of the controllers these are the uh name of the controller host name you can say now in templates we might have multiple templates over here we might have feature templates so this is something just uh an overview to the just i was just showing you the things over there so as i said these devices need reachability reachability Uh, among these devices okay reachability is what nothing but underlay or you can say underlay is what your physical infrastructure okay physical connectivity this is known as underlay 
okay so first thing end to end connectivity should be there okay you can use any igb protocol either ospf or you can use eigrp in the latest version but you should make a reachability between these controllers so that they can get authenticated they can talk to each other then comes the overlay the fabric okay that is what is overlay overlay is logical tunnels created from different types of traffic okay so you can say a virtual network uh, that is built on top of underlying network infrastructure so we have suppose we have a physical connectivity and over that physical connectivity we have something a overlay connectivity okay so cisco sd wan fabric is also called an overlay network okay which forms a software overlay okay now uh, this overlay network uh, also support something known as next generation software services okay so which can include this lisp vxlan or otv these all things so first thing that we need is overlay sorry underlay underlay the underlay connectivity should be there and then we need overlay now once we have the connectivity everyone should be aware of v bond so on every device we need to go and configure that my v bond is at this ip address so everyone should be aware of v bond okay so as i said uh for security purposes everyone should be aware of v bond okay now why we need security over here okay so in in dm vpn also we have, we were having ipsec okay which was also secure but in ipsec for ipsec what do you have we have manual authentication okay so if ipsec is only good when we have two three locations okay it is not good when we have because it it supports manual authentication it is used for it is used as a manual authentication so if you have large or if you have a large environment or if you have many locations now you cannot work with manual authentication so that is the reason we use something known as digital certificates okay digital certificates are something that are used in sd wan for security purposes now how the devices will be secured now what v bond will be checking v bond will be checking these digital certificates that are provided okay uh so what what happens everyone will send their uh, uh certificates to v bond and then one v bond will what v bond will do v bond will check it v bond will authenticate it and then the uh, v bond will respond or authenticate the uh, devices on the basis of that now digital certificates we can also use self signed certificates we can use our own servers we can use we can create our own self signed certificates but overall thing overall uh, idea is that v bond needs to be uh, v bond is the main component when a device boots up okay every device has to go to the v bond when they boot up got it any questions anyone yes you can say now cisco sd wan with uh, v manage what it, it what it does it provides intelligent routing of application okay what do you mean by intelligent routing of application it will give you uh, a you can say a easier way to uh, manage all the things okay okay guys so now this is sd wan is something that uh, 
is the table say component you can say of any of the modern network technologies okay nowadays so cisco recommend that you should use a public ip for uh, vbon yes we should have a public ip address now if you have a private network then there is no use of having anything okay see in my infrastructure also if i show you my infrastructure this is my private network okay so if i go in the devices if i see the controller my v bond is uh where is my running configuration if i show you my v bond is having an ip address as what 10 2250.11 not needed this is just but the recommendation of cisco i am saying the recommendation cisco recommends that vbon should have a public ip address yes if your transport is internet then you should have uh, but i don't think so means if you are using mpls private mpls network also okay what is means i i don't think so you need uh, only private ip public ip address i don't think so let's research on this everyone there is a question there is a, a homework for you guys <coughs> so there is a question in the chat ankit has asked if i have a public uh, sorry if i have a private mpls network is it uh, necessary that i should use a public ip address for vbon as per cisco's recommendation you should use public ip address now you need to search on this and uh, in the next session we will just discuss some more things about this okay so i want to see if you guys are how much you guys are interested in this uh, topic so let's discuss on this so the v bond is the only device that requires to have a public ip address okay yeah that's what i'm telling if the the question is see bhavani the question is if i am having a private mpls cloud okay or a private mpls network okay bit means if, if as i gave you the example if you remember i gave you an example that i can use if these are my different networks i don't have internet i only have a private mpls then is there a use of having a public ip address that that is the question ankit is asking that's what we need to uh, you all need to search and you you all need to get back to me in the tomorrow session for vhs or for we manage for we smart for everyone see everyone will go to we bond only indirectly you getting my point so everyone will go to the we bond only so there are the newer version i don't remember it would be um, 20 or 21 I, i don't remember exactly
V bond is still there. V bond would be there. Then who would who would take care of the security? V bond would be there. Okay, so it is uh, the the newer version would be like I guess twenty or something. I don't know exactly. You can search. It would be twenty dot ten something. Okay, so we'll stop over here for today.